Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to Synchronicity Web TV. I am your astrologer and your host, Nadia Shaw, and this is your moment of synchronicity. And I am just so excited about this particular conversation that I'm about to share with you. And a part of the reason that I started interviewing people so many years ago, it's been about at least 10 years now of interviewing others, or maybe 12 years now, but very early on in my uh, YouTube channel presence, I knew that I wanted to share with the world and, and be a part of people shining who I think are absolutely brilliant. And so a while back, I came across this Instagram account called Astrology Roast. And the posts were just so witty, so uh, insightful, so funny. And they just had a, a certain energy and personality to it. And right away, I was hooked. I thought, wow, what a unique voice in astrology that people need. And I have seen this account, Astrology Roast on Instagram, grow into one of the most followed astrology accounts on the Instagram platform today. Well, Astrology Post, Astrology Roast with Astrology Post. Well, they also have a podcast as well. And for the very first time, I'm getting to meet the amazing people who are behind Astrology Roast, Itai and Karen. Thank you so much, you guys, for being here. Uh, thank you. It's, I'm, I'm thank losing you. it. I'm very excited. That is a beautiful introduction. I feel like a celebrity. So thank you. And um, both me and Itai are such huge fans of your work. And so I think the privilege is, you know, definitely ours. So thank you for being in touch and being open to it connect with us. We used to live together to be flatmates and it, it used to be a ceremony, a weekly ceremony to like watch your weekly, um, you know, your weekly uh, horoscope. What would you call it? A weekly chat? And um, we were just like, it's, it's amazing because something that drove us to, to, made, to make our podcast is, you know, your channel. So full circle. That makes me endlessly happy, let me tell you, because I really believe that the more of us that share, the better it is for all of astrology. And so it means so much to me that uh, what it is that I'm sharing and putting out there inspired you guys to share as well. And it is such a, like I said, it's such a unique and wonderful voice that you guys have in the astrological world with Astrology Roast. So how did that start? How did Astrology Roast get started? I'm an Aries sun, which means um, everyone knows Aries are very impulsive. And I was sitting on the couch, which is a very main character in our podcast because the couch has, you know, its own part of the podcast because we used to record it sitting on the couch and spend a lot of the time sitting <laughs> on the couch. Um, but then I was, I was there on the couch and asking Karen um, if she wants to do a podcast. And she was like, yeah, I think so, maybe. And two hours later, I already purchased a microphone <laughs> and read a million tutorials. And I was like very Aries about it. And I think on that same day, we recorded the first episode and we just got addicted to sharing and talking to others about it. It is yeah. so much fun, isn't it? Just to share and, uh, and to put who you are out there. I think that part of the reason people and so many people resonate with what you guys do is because even though, yes, it's funny and it's clever and it's witty, I think people respond to what is honest, you know, like that's really the thing. And so mm. the fact that this originated from this very honest place within you guys hanging out on your couch, that's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. And um, you just reminded me, I think Itai, you put up a kind of wall of inspiring women in our house and that there was definitely a picture of you that said the universe is wise and loving on it so you were in the same realm as like rihanna and there was remind me who else was britney spears as well britney spears. Um, who i've been defending quite actively this week and then there was any big haters about it so you were kind of up there and we just yeah we we did the podcast i think after having watched your weekly videos every week and just sitting on that couch reflecting on life and love and everything in between and you know is the universe wise and loving sometimes yes yeah, sometimes no what's happening and you know i think you know it's interesting that you talk about honesty because i think that's really reflected in your work as well Nadia, and that's why we've loved that and hopefully been able to channel that into both the podcast and the instagram and just 
just knowing that everyone, you know, at four in the morning is sometimes sitting eating some ice cream and, you know, wondering if life could be better or different. So we're all kind of connected universally in that way. And yeah, I think that, that that's a beautiful way to connect, particularly, you know, Instagram being so immediate. And so like the fact that we're talking to you now is still just a complete head spin to me. So yeah. Well, it's wild to think I'm on your wall next to Rihanna and Britney Spears. That's, yeah. that's, that's so cool. And <laughs> sure are. Sure are. <laughs> like, okay, there's the podcast part of it and the posting mm. part of it. What came first and where did the ideas come from? The more, and I can see it also with the response of, um, that people have to the post, the more the post is like, legit something authentic and you know not being scared to make fun of yourself as well then that people relate to it more so when i think of what am i going to post usually the best posts are like something that happened to me today with someone and then how do i put a visual on it and um, as you can already see from the rihanna britney spears and nadia shah wall um, it's all about <laughs> pop culture and people that are relatable, you know, and I think that finding a funny picture of Britney ordering a Fanta in a drive through and then making that Fanta an, a need and making Britney a star sign. And then when you watch it, you like relate to it on so many levels because you're like, you were on that drive through <laughs> looking like a mess a week ago and also you're a Sagittarius so it's funny and I think yeah the, the best ideas come literally from someone talking to you making like a really funny um, thing that fits their star sign I think mm. in the podcast some episode we would do um, like according to the season so like Mercury retrograde is happening we'll do an episode about that and then I'm pretty sure we had a, a, an episode about Rihanna and her Fenty line and talking about how a Pisces would change the world in that way that is like, you know, it's very a collective act, but through mm. being a celebrity and through makeup and through her Aries moon being creative and being um, breaking like a breakthrough. So yeah, it's a mixed bag, I think. There's one part of what you guys do, which is about like the specific signs which I always check my sun, my moon, and my rising. And it's always like, oh, yes, oh, yes. That's how I feel. That's how I'm growing. That's what, you know, that's what I check. Um, but then there are also posts that you guys do that are um, not necessarily just for one sign, but still mm. capture uh, something really real, something really collective. Yeah. For example, I think the Maker Retrograde episode, um, post where you can see someone, you know, um, doing everything they're not supposed to do, like texting their ex. And then obviously we all do that. We, we're all, we always talk about how your ex is texting you, but I think we don't give enough um, room for us being the ex, the exes, the text people. Um, yeah, but I think those ones are also, people really like them. And I've got to say that the, um, the comments that people leave are like part of the creativity and the beauty and the humour. Like people come up the, with the wackiest stuff. Like a friend of ours who was also featured on our podcast put in capital letters, and she's a Libran to give some context, but she put in capital letters on one post, flirting is not cheating. And she's like, I've been receiving hate mail for the last weeks about how flirting is cheating and like how can you say this? And it's like people are so invested in it as well. And I... I just love the kind of enthusiasm yeah. and also it's a bit terrifying as well, but it's, it, it just adds, you know, extra humor, extra flavor. When people like tag someone and say, lol, laughing my ass off, you know, million eggplant emojis. I'm like, it's really, it's literature. It's beautiful. <laughs> right. Sure now that you is. say that it's like modern literature, isn't it? It's yeah. like, it is. <laughs> I remember seeing this person once on TV and he was talking about how he um, is like an expert in documenting Twitter posts. Mm. That's his area oh. of academia where he considers Twitter posts like part of modern literature and a part of the modern discourse. And so he's like cataloging um, like what important figures are saying and what they're talking about and what that means uh, in terms of policy and politics and all of that. And so, you know, like they say with the internet, it's the digital space 
So in mm. a way, it's like ephemeral, right? It's not real, quote unquote. But then anything you put on the internet is there forever. Like it never mm. really goes away, even if you delete the post or whatever, yeah. it's there forever mm. and ever. So it's this very interesting space where on the one hand, it's energetic, right? That's what the digital is. Ultimately, it's mm. energy sort of showing up visually. But at the same time, there's that permanence of it as well. Mm. And so whether that permanence is in terms of the actual information or whether it is in terms of um, the impact that you make on others, right? Because mm. I think all communication is infinite. Like you could make a mm. post today and you could put it up there and then t 10, 20 years from now, someone could be in a moment and they'll remember that meme. They'll remember that post and it can make a mm. big difference in their life in that moment. And so it's pretty cool that you guys are a part of that. Mm. And, and how you have you felt in terms of your relationship to YouTube? Because obviously YouTube's your baby and that's yeah. kind of was the main kind of starting point for you. And, and now like, you know, it sounds like you're branching off as well, but do you still feel kind of deep love for the YouTube platform and the video, the video scope kind of space? Absolutely. I will say like YouTube, I feel like is this great gift, at least in my life, it has felt like a great gift. It Before I really dived into YouTube, like I had this production deal with a uh, an important company in Toronto and I was giving so much of myself to this. Like I remember pouring mm. myself into this and they just had a really different vision for what they wanted me to be and what they wanted the show to be. And there came a point where I realized like, this isn't working. Like this is mm. not, you know, right anymore. It just mm. felt like this fight and it was so exhausting and it was very hard to let that go. But mm. then I started focusing on doing what I really wanted to do on YouTube. And that sense of just really being myself and being able to mm. share part of me. It's not, of course, being myself. I'm a multifaceted human being, right? Mm -hmm. I remember once going out dancing with a friend and she was like, I can't believe this person dancing here is the same person on YouTube. Like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a person like anybody yeah. else. But there's this, this part of me that I like to share, uh, at least on YouTube. And then I have a part of me that goes on my personal Facebook. And then there's a part of me that goes to the club and has fun. And the part of me that walks my mm. dog. So there's these different, just like we have all the planets within us, but it has really been YouTube that's allowed me to like yeah. own some truth about myself and mm -hmm. to just put it out there, like without needing a gatekeeper, without needing permission to just say, this is who I am. And here, I'm going to put it out into the world because mm -hmm. it is about just being in my truth and that being enough. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel yeah. about what you do with what you share? Like, have you thought about the meaningfulness of it to you, whether it's the platform, mm. whether it's the message? Absolutely. I think um, maybe similarly, uh, the being able to share something authentically. And for me, like I'm, you know, I tried to do one or two posts on the Instagram. Itai does all of that and I'm terrible at it. I did one post about like the Korean war or something like that. And it was weird and freaky and no one understood what it was about. So just it's like, okay, I'm not going to do that, but I'm just going to show up and talk with my friend and see if people connect with that about whatever, you know, we relate to. And it's been really beautiful because as someone who's actually, you know, not always wanting to be on the camera, I just, can have a chat press record and pretend like nothing's happening but then people will come up to me in the street or someone will come and telling tell me that they've started to know their attachment style you know and they're avoidant and attached because of this or they'll just ask me oh, I'm dating this person and like how's that going or how's your situation ship going with your Scorpio lover like they'll come and ask me these things which is quite beautiful but also being able to just um talk about things that are quite meaningful or authentic or it might be painful or grief or intergenerational trauma, quite dense topics, but with a levity and a lightness and with a, a pseudo anonymity from podcast or from broadcast radio. So it's, I love that. I feel like it gives me a freedom to be show offy and, and all the things that I'd love to do, but just put it out there. And then you just, you get connections or you people relate to it who get a part of you and I think it's interesting that you said there's this part there's my clubbing part and my biggie smalls part and mm. we're all so many bits and pieces but to share this kind of um parts of yourself that are vulnerable but quite honest and truthful but hopefully 
to help someone that might be in a similar context and for them to relate to that part can be really, really beautiful and meaningful and a true light, you know, in a otherwise quite mundane week. So I've, I've loved it. I love that medium quite a lot. I must say. I have to agree. And I think that being able to then communicate to the people, like the fact that people can message us and say, Hey, like you make, you made a joke about your daddy issues. And I also have this and like my dad is also an Aquarius and I experienced that. And having that ability to continue the conversation after you recorded something at your own home or even posting a joke and having someone commenting like, that's me and stuff like that. It's, and there's a lot of criticism about the internet and you know, the, how it's not real life. And I feel like to me, the ability to exist, like there's like hours and hours of me talking about issues online. Everyone can reach it and it's, it's accessible to everyone and it's free. Mm -hmm. And the ability to be there and, you know, and for you as, as well on YouTube, like you're now, you now exist while we're talking, you also exist in other people's laptops talking about other things. And I think that um, it's unbelievable. And it, it is the age of Aquarius, I think, <laughs> in that sense that for people that, that ex embrace it, it's the ability to, to connect to so many people continuously. And it's, I find it unbelievable and amazing. I love that. That's so beautifully put. Isn't that true? Like, like in a way it is like the digital sphere. So it's one thing, but it's also, you know, like I just think it's incredible that we as humanity manifested the internet. I mm. think that speaks volumes to what we believe about ourselves and our energy and our interconnection even. And it is a reflection of that, of how connected we actually are. But then also yeah. the more connected we are like on the internet, the more, it can also be a very isolating experience at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like it's not an embodied experience mm -hmm. to be connected online. And so that dichotomy between being so immersed in connection, but then also feeling alienated from each other, uh, that in and of itself is, is interesting, but it's also just amazing to be a part of that, like in all the different ways that we are, right? Like you guys yeah. are online and in the digital sphere as am I. And so we're a part of that connection, that interconnection. But then we have our real lives as well. Mm. And how we go about living our lives every yes. day and the people that we connect with every day. Um, that is its, its own space, but still a powerful space as well. Mm. So tell us about yeah. the club. So tell us about the club, Adia. <laughs> well, nowadays, what, what does that look like uh, for you? <laughs> well, I, I really love uh, Daddy Yankee. Daddy Yankee is my man now for these days. And, you know, it's interesting because I, I actually yesterday, December 29, no, mm. December 19, rather, which was yesterday, it was the seven year anniversary of me coming to Mexico for the very first time. And mm. I remember when I came here, Everywhere I went, I heard a song and I, I didn't speak the language at all. I didn't really know what I was hearing. And I remember going home on January 1st and I just wanted to find this song. And so I went online, I, I looked, I thought, well, if it's everywhere, then it must be on the Latin charts. And mm. so I went and I looked up all the songs on the Latin charts on YouTube, like I Googled them and everything. And then I heard this song by Daddy Yankee called La Bamba. And as soon as I heard that song, mm. I just uh, knew certain things in my soul and in my spirit. I was having mm. my, um, my nodal at the time. And so it was like I knew in that moment that I had to go back to Mexico, mm. that I had wow. some karmic connection there, that I had to learn this language, you know? Mm. And so it was uh, three years wow. to the day that I actually saw daddy yankee in concert so basically what happened i went home january 1st and i just knew i had to go back but then i had lady gaga tickets and lady gaga concert was february 12th mm. and so february 13th i officially moved and i was there but i remember like three years to the almost to the day it was december three years after uh 2012 so december of 2015 
and I saw Daddy Yankee in concert and it was just like this moment, this powerful mm. moment, like, wow, this man wow. changed my life. He put my life wow. was going on one way and he plucked me and he put me on a whole other pathway. And it just really made me realize how powerful it is to share, right? That was one level mm. of it. Um, but at the same time, because you were asking about the club, yeah, like when Daddy Yankee comes on, I, I am right there. I am right there. Everybody. <laughs> and if you've ever been to a gathering of astrologers, you know that mm -hmm. we, don't, we don't mind busting out into a dance, right? We are perfectly comfortable on a dance floor. I remember you saying um, how much you loved Starstruck by Lady Gaga in one of your videos, mm. which is a song that I was absolutely addicted to. Not her biggest hit, not like, a, I don't think it was even on all the versions all around the world of her album. I think it was like a special track for like a deluxe. And um, <laughs> I, I, remember, I think, Karen, you were next to me when, when uh, we watched the video when, where Nadia was referencing Starstruck and I mm. lost it. I was like, what are the chances? <laughs> like, they, they are big chances because she's a huge superstar, but still, mm. amazing <laughs> song, amazing artist. <laughs> There was a, a summer that I spent in Europe. I think that was in 2011, if I remember correctly. And that was, uh, you know, I remember I was writing my column at that time. I was writing daily horoscopes uh, for Canadian mm -hmm. newspapers. And I was able to continue writing my column while traveling around Europe. And I, I went to university in Europe, so I kind of know a lot of people there anyways. But that summer, it was Lady Gaga who was the theme song to my life. I mean, she was mm. in my ears, she was on my headphones the whole time. And then, you know, I discovered Daddy Yankee, then I started listening to all these Spanish artists, uh, or Spanish speaking artists rather. Um, but Lady Gaga has a special place in my heart for sure. Always, <laughs> yeah, I love her. I love that you guys are putting your own unique voice in the world. I think that that is just incredible. Like really, it is unique. It is brilliant what you guys do. It is insightful. It is, it's honest. Like it's funny and it's witty, but it's honest. Like, yeah, like sometimes mm -hmm. I watch that, I go, oh my God, yes, me <laughs> Aquarius. I would, I would be, <laughs> that that drink that Brittany is drinking, that is <laughs> to me. That drink is a symbol of this to me as an Aquarian. Like that is the kind of thing that I think when I read you guys. So uh, it is just such a, a privilege and a pleasure and a joy to get to connect with you and get to meet you and to get to celebrate you. And I just thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It's thank been, you. Yeah. We said it earlier, we're gonna say it again. Um, you are a big, huge part of us choosing to even go deep into astrology and putting making a podcast and being able to connect to others and then also eventually being able to sit and connect with you um what? it's really <laughs> it's really surreal to i think to me and to karen as well yeah um, and i think you um your your, your sense of mission and your sense of purpose in what you're putting out there is so deeply felt and so clear in your work and yeah, I speak for all of your Astro Fabulous fans far and beyond. Um, thank you for what you put out there and for making it accessible to people and for, you know, focusing on hope and light and also being able to talk about the club in the same sentence as Ibn Arabi. I mean, that is fucking <laughs> awesome and beautiful and much needed. And for also celebrating a lot of other astrologers and other practitioners, you really are so generous with that as well. So. Thank you so much. I keep watching the weekly videos and I keep, I will do that. And um, thank you for bringing us more into astrology as well. It's been such a, a pleasure and a privilege. Thank you so much. I hope you guys keep doing more and more of what you do. And I can't wait to see the amazing things that you guys continue to do in astrology. I'm truly very excited for you. Thank you. Thank you guys. And thank you so much for watching. I'm truly so grateful for it. Thank you for being here to celebrate Astrology Roast with me. And until we connect again, take care.